welcome to wherever I'm at right now. The heat wave in Portland is definitely doing its thing. And the air conditioning in the bus, while it is working, it can't keep up with the solar refractive index when there's this heat dome or whatever is going on. So anyways, I'm in this hotel. I gave up and decided to come here for a couple of nights because I needed a place with a functioning shower and some air conditioning. I, uh, I've had mild heat exhaustion or heat stroke a few times already this year, and last year got it pretty bad as well. Apparently once it's happened, you're really susceptible to it in the future or something. But anyways, I, um, we'll just say some things happened and I realized that I need to take steps to not die. <laughs> as funny as that sounds. Anyways, while we're here, my data loggers from China showed up. These are those Handtech 365F units, I believe. We're gonna be using these for the, uh, the Volt Pro battery testing. The idea is I want to use the Volt Pro charger on the 10 amp high voltage mode and basically do a bunch of discharge and charge tests then also use the eight amp lower voltage mode. Again, the amperage doesn't matter. It's just the voltage curves on these particular chargers. But I want to do a bunch of different testing with different batteries and a couple different chargers and um, come to some sort of conclusion for this issue of the Permobile batteries that are failing like super prematurely, like six months or less, sometimes like within a month. So anyways, needed to buy some equipment to get the proper data for this. Uh, hmm. This box was full of sawdust also. Let's see here. Oddly, these showed up in less than a week from China. I've not encountered shipping that fast before, but that particular eBay seller, I guess, is pretty good with customs and stuff. Yeah, here we go. We got two of these. Handtech is the brand. So we've got some temperature probe, a USB A to B, and some regular meter probes. And the main event is this here. It's got USB on one end. These ones are uh, battery powered, so they can be completely isolated from what you're testing and data logging. But they do temperature, voltage, capacitance, resistance, like all kinds of stuff. It's a little light that turns on when I press the button in there. Did it beep? Yeah, it beeps. So anyways, um, I can't go outside for very long and I can't go to my workspace because it's so hot. Inside the bus currently, actually here, let me pull up Home Assistant real quick. Okay, currently inside the bus, this is 6 p.m. It's 92 degrees. Outside is approaching 110. I think that sensor might be in the sun, but where the bus is at is kind of a weird subclimate zone. So it does typically get hotter there. I think 110 might be a little bit too warm, but it's almost 93 inside. Uh, that tends to get higher and higher till about 8 p.m. when the sun goes behind the hill. And I can't get it below 70 in there at night. So anyways, gonna be here for a couple of days and uh, hopefully things will be better. They do have a shower, it's got a bench, whole roll in thing, all that. And I'm starting to feel a lot better. I got some food. Fortunately, it was Dairy Queen. So <laughs> I'll probably unpackage the other one of these. They are Bluetooth and supposedly work with tablets. So we'll play with these in a little bit and uh, see if we can get them set up. Quick review of this accessible hotel room. Uh, main thing, air conditioning. The other cool thing though, is there's no carpet. It's just like, I don't know, linoleum or some sort of floating snap together floor. So that's kind of nice. And there's actually room to get all the way around the bed. So that's cool. I think I could even turn around in this space right here. Let's see. Uh, feet are under the bed, but yeah, that's not bad. The main thing though, I had to call like 12 different hotels. It, you know how it is trying to find stuff. I called this one, asked them specifically, do you have a roll-in shower? 
does it have a bench that is attached to the wall, that being the key part, because the freestanding shower benches, well, gravity does its thing and I'm not very good. Well, I'm really good at knocking them over. So I went to that one hotel and of course they didn't have that. So called 12 other places and finally found this one, but here I'll show you. So pretty decent sized bathroom. The sink is away from the toilet and there is a cutout right here. It is unfortunately multiple kinds of fluorescent lighting. It actually reminds me, I was gonna buy one of those battery powered Ryobi work lights and bring it with me for situations like this. So I have my own lighting, but anyways, this right here is what I'm talking about that does not work. But we have this thing here, which is attached to the wall. Now it is kind of leaning downhill a little bit, but I made it work. And yeah, so functional shower. The entryway is a little bit um, weird because it's not super wide here. But you know, for, I think it's 146 a night. Can't really complain. It's got AC and I can turn it down as cold as I want. <laughs> Some of the other hotels now, they limit you to like 70 degrees or something like that. But functional shower and AC, and I fit in the room. That ticks all the boxes. I still don't really know what's going on right now. Uh, I'm gonna do nothing for a while, I think. Got the TV on mute, I don't even know what's playing right there, but anyways, I'll be back in a while. <laughs> It appears to be the next day. So I found that with these these Handtech data loggers, they do come with documentation or a manual, but there's a lot of stuff they don't really cover, like how do you charge the battery or how do you know if the battery is low. This particular one is set up to work with an iPad or an iOS device specifically. So I figured I'd do some testing and just kind of familiarize myself with the software. It is possible to connect it to a computer Oddly, it won't connect to a Mac, it has to be to a Windows computer. So it's funny the Bluetooth works on Apple, but the USB only works on Windows. Anyways, the thing came with a, well, both of them, but they came with thermocouples. So I've got them set up here and I put them in this air conditioner. And obviously these things cycle on and off as you know the temperature in the room changes or whatever. So we've got the graph running here. It looks like it's sampling every two seconds currently. I don't think there's a way to adjust it with this app as far as the sample rate, but I know you can on the computer software. I'm gonna try and find some videos on YouTube on how to use these things, but for now, I'm just gonna leave this thing data logging and we'll see if we can get some, you know, some cool graphs and stuff on here. Well, fast forward a couple of hours, what have we learned? Turns out these Handtech data loggers are basically just DVOMs or digital voltum meters with a PC interface. Now this particular model you can run via USB, but it also has a lithium ion battery inside of it and a Bluetooth radio. And what that allows, I think the only reason that exists is if you need to do completely isolated measurements. That way you don't end up with any ground loops connecting through the USB to your laptop and the power adapter and whatnot. They do not have any internal storage. Basically, you have to either use an iPad because they don't have an Android version or a Windows PC. You can only connect one at a time. Like I tried having the USB interface running and capturing on the computer and also connecting the Bluetooth. They won't allow you to do that. You can change settings, but it won't actually output data on both at the same time, which makes sense. Also, unfortunately, you can only connect one of the data loggers to a Windows machine at a time. The other thing I haven't tried yet, well, I'm pretty sure it won't work, but you can connect multiples of these to your iPad, but you can only have one going at a time. What I wanna test next is to have both of them up and running and attempt to run a data capture and switch between the two. I don't think that will work because the other thing I found is when the software is capturing on your tablet, if the screen turns off or it disconnects from Bluetooth, the data acquisition stops. So knowing all this, I think it'll be useful. What I'll probably have to do is just get a Windows computer, run a couple instances of the software at the same time, running some sort of virtualization or VM or something like that. And we can have both of them running at once to measure voltage 
and amperage. Because again, we're trying to capture all the data for charging these volt per batteries. And I wanna see the amperage and the voltage at the same time. You, you can get 120,000 samples in one session on the software. So if you figure two seconds per measurement, that's about 66 hours. So that's not bad. You can get more than that or less depending on the sample rate. I'll probably set it up to run every five seconds because I don't think we need more resolution than that. But anyways, now that I understand how these things work, I think we can actually get a rig set up and start doing some testing. But the heat is still a thing and I just checked. I, I'm also running Home Assistant in the new workspace and it's like 83 degrees in there. Oh, I just realized I have several portable air conditioners. I should just take one to the workspace and set that up. Yeah, that's a plan. Okay, because <laughs> right now I'm just kind of stuck in this hotel room <laughs> playing around with stuff and trying to edit videos and I'm <laughs> data logging the temperature coming out of that thing because I can't go anywhere else. I'm going to be here tonight. I think what I'll do is, let's see, this is Tuesday. So I think tomorrow during the day, actually in the morning, I'm gonna get up early and go out to the storage unit, grab one of the AC units and take that out to the workspace. Okay, I think we have a plan. I think this is a good environment because <laughs> I'm not overheating and I can play around with the stuff that actually is gonna take some time. And honestly, I don't know if I would get around to figuring out how these all work and doing all this testing, unless I was forced to stay in a small room. So that works. As I suspected, we've got both of these things powered on here. And there goes the iPad. See the lights are on. When we open the software, we can see both of them exist. But if we try to connect to one versus the other, um, it randomly picks one of the two. Even if we connect to this one, you can hear the relays clicking as we change modes, but it's only connecting to that one. So you have to basically have the one that you don't want to use powered off. Let's see. Okay. So this one's on now we can connect to this and I'm going to write on here. This one ends in a, and this one ends in six. That way I know the difference. Click on that. And now this one's connected. We can start our measurement for temperature. The other interesting thing is the scale doesn't change until it actually starts running. And then if you switch between centigrade and Fahrenheit, it resets your data and starts over. So that's something you have to keep in mind as well. Knowing the limitations is the key part of this. So what happens if we just turn it off? Okay, obviously data acquisition stops. Okay, let's turn it back on. So we have to reconnect. Now it's back in millivolt mode. So yeah, we have to stop the acquisition. It's not on temperature, so let's go back to voltage, then temperature, then run, and that works. Okay, like I said, learning all the idiosyncrasies of how these work is my plan here, so now I know. It's also very easy to lose your data logs if you're not careful. I think the best way to do this is gonna be on a computer because you can set the tablets up to not power off but if you accidentally press the wrong button you can lose you know 60 hours of data or whatever you've been logging so anyways now we know i devised a way also to figure out if the batteries on these things are charged or not they just use uh usb a to b so i've got the rooting USB analyzer here. Let's plug this in and we can see how many amps are being pulled and that should give us some idea of how charged this thing is. Seeing as how the red light on it when it comes on is only red and it doesn't change color at all. So let's plug this in, look at our amperage here and yeah we're pulling about uh, almost 500 milliamps. This one I know is charged and it was pulling like maybe 50 milliamps. So I guess what we can do, whoops, why did it turn off? Now oh, this is one of those smart power banks, but I guess what we can do is to figure out if they're charged, plug it in with the USB meter because the software nowhere in it and the app has no indication of battery charge life. 
You know what? I think on Thursday on the live stream, we're going to take one of these apart. Because there are fuses in here, because it's got a 600 milliamp and a 10 amp current mode. So I want to know if the fuses are replaceable, what size of batteries in here, and then we can also measure the power draw. Now, see, it's been charging for a minute. We're already down to 370 milliamps. So I would assume they were probably charged from the factory. Ooh, there's some holes. Can we see inside there? Well, I'm not seeing an 18650. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take these apart on Thursday, assuming my air conditioner life hack works, which it should. It's a room and you put an air conditioner in it and it should cool off. But yeah, I wanna see what's inside these. If nothing else, we need to figure out how to replace the fuses if we can. If they're soldered on, we could probably install some external ones or something, but I think we're gonna call that good for now. I don't know how much else I can drone on about this stuff in a hotel room. Again, you're gonna have to bear with me with this heat and I'm still in the process of moving and trying to get that apartment. That That's a whole thing. But as soon as the current tenants are out of there, I can go in there and take a look and see if it'll work. That place has mini split air conditioning. So I don't want to get my hopes up, but that would be an ideal situation. Getting the air conditioning set up in the new workspace will be good. But in the meanwhile, I feel like I haven't been able to make as many videos as I want or work on as much stuff. So anyways, you know how that goes. Um, welcome to the club. <laughs> Anyways, I will catch you guys on Thursday on the live stream. Thanks for watching. Blazing sun outside, sweating like a waterfall. Got the day in overdrive in this hotel we stand tall. Laptops humming loud, new data loggers in the mix. Numbers climbing dawn to dusk, chasing every little fix. Summer heat wave burning bright. Got the AC running all night. Testing gadgets in this room. We're the storm before the boom. Palm trees swaying slow. Waves dancing on the glass Wires stretching to and fro In this moment we won't pass Midnight oil burning strong Heat waves dancing on the glass Wires stretching to and fro In this moment we won't pass Midnight oil burning strong Updates keep the groove on pace Measurements where they belong In this rhythm we embrace Summer heat wave burning bright Got the AC running all night Testing gadgets in this room We're the storm before the boom See this microwave right here? See how it's like crooked and not centered here? I'm trying an experiment. I'm trying to prevent my OCD from taking over. I'm not gonna touch that microwave. I'm gonna leave it right there and all will be fine.